Okay, guys, sine, cosine, tangent. Oh my gosh, it's exciting. Okay, let's get started. Um, first of all, I'm going to link some videos over there, which are also with sine, cosine, and tangent, like the next step, if you will. Okay, but let's get started here. Okay, this is going to maybe seem, this might look a little intimidating, but once we do a couple problems, you're going to be like, oh, that's it? Oh, I can do that. So don't get overwhelmed. All right. All right. Sine, cosine, and tangent. These are tools we use to help us figure out right triangles. Cause I don't know. We just like right triangles in math world. So they help us find sides. As long as you have an angle and one side, you can figure out the other sides. Okay. Um, it can also help you find the angle if you have two sides. Okay. So what does this all mean? Okay. Sine is a fraction with the opposite over the hypotenuse. What does that mean? Well, we're referring to the sides and it depends on which angle you're talking about. So since I have theta here, that's a fancy word for just this symbol we use for angles sometimes. Um, the side across from theta is the opposite side. The one right next to it is the adjacent side. And then the side across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Okay. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay. You're probably like, what is she talking about? Let's do a problem. This over here is just an easy way to remember this. So Katoa. Okay. Sine S O H. Okay. C A H T O A. So it helps you remember. So Katoa. All right. Guess what? Oh, where's my mini one? I have my mini one here so that we still have our little reference sheet. Okay. So you might have something that looks like this. And hold on. I'm going to cover up this side for a second so we don't have so much going on. Okay. So here's our triangle. We want to find the ratios in reduced form. We'll explore that in a second. For sine of E, cosine of E, and tangent of E. This is just them, um, I can't think of the word. <laughs> Shorter, what's the word? I can't remember. I'm not English, okay, math. So the sine of E, that means we are dealing with this angle here, angle E. I like to mark it somehow so I remember, okay? So you could circle it or mark the angle. So abbreviated, is that the word? <laughs> so, all right. So the sine of E. I also like to label um, the sides. So the one across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So I'll put H. The one next to the angle we're talking about is adjacent. And the one across is opposite. Now you are literally just writing the numbers on top of each other. Okay. So the sine of E is opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite side is 5. Hypotenuse is 13. Oh my gosh, that can't be simplified, so I'm done. That's the sine of E. Okay? Cosine of E is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 12. Hypotenuse is 13. That can't be simplified, so I'm done. See, I told you it's not too bad, right? All right, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 5 over 12. Again, that can't be simplified, so we're done. Oh my gosh. All right, over here we are going, oh, sorry, are going to have some that can be simplified, that need to be simplified. So stick around. Okay, now we are looking for find ratios in reduced form for sine of B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. So this time we're working with angle B, okay? So that top one, mark it somehow to help you remember. And then I like to label the sides. So this is my hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. This is adjacent to that B. And this is opposite. So just keep in mind, if we were doing A, this would be opposite and this would be adjacent, right? So that's why it's important to know which angle you're working with. So we're working with angle B. All right. The sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite of B is 3. The hypotenuse is three square roots of 10. Okay. First thing I might notice is that three over three reduces to just one, right? 
So if you need a reminder on reducing fractions, I will link a video in the corner. Um, so this simplifies to 1 over the square root of 10. Now, you might be like, oh, I'm done. But denominators are very sensitive. We don't like having radicals in the denominator because a lot of times they're an irrational number and we just don't want those in our denominator. Um, I'm going to quickly um, fix this. If you need more detail, more examples on how to rationalize a denominator, which means get the radical out of there, um, I'll link another video. Okay, but really quickly, what we do here is I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. You might be like, that's so random. Why did she do that? Well, watch what it does. First of all, why can I do that? Because the square root of 10 over the square root of 10 is just one. So I'm really multiplying by a one, okay? I'm changing what it looks like, but I'm not changing its actual value, okay? So one times the square root of 10 is one square root 10. So I really don't need to write the one. Um, and then when we multiply two square roots together, um, 10, sorry, <laughs> square root of 10 times the square root of 10, the square roots cancel and I'm just left with 10. Oh my gosh, wasn't that nice? So now, again, I don't have to write that one because it's just one times that, which is just that. I just said that a lot of times. And that is my answer. Okay, you might be like, how did I get from here to here? Well, guess what? If you want to try it, stick both of these in your calculator and you will get the same ugly decimal, okay? So we changed what it looked like, but the answer is the same, okay? Um, and we got that radical out of our denominator, okay? So now we like it. Okay, cosine of B. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So we've got nine over my hypotenuse is three square roots of 10. All right, I've got two alarms going off for our simplification here. Nine and three can reduce, right? Three goes into nine three times. Um, so I'm left with three over the square root of 10. And then just like up here, we don't want a radical on the bottom. So I'm gonna multiply by the square root of 10 over the square root of 10, okay? Now, when I do that, I get three square roots of 10 over, when I multiply these, they're the same number over under there, the radicals cancel and I'm just left with 10. Now, if three and 10 could simplify, we would simplify more, but they don't, so that is my cosine, okay? All right, tangent of B is opposite over adjacent, so three over nine which can simplify. Three goes into three once, three goes into nine three times, and that is my tangent. Okay, we're done. If you're like, why is this even a thing? You will love these in maybe your next chapter, I don't know, next section. Um, if, you're, if you need help on those, um, click on those videos I linked at the beginning and get your homework done and have dreams of math and our nightmares.